Today, we're going to talk about ray traced global illumination, or RTGI for short. Here's our agenda. First, we're going to go over what global illumination is. Then I'll show you how to turn on real time ray traced global illumination in Unreal and show you some of the things it can do. Then we'll have a short discussion about when you should use it. And finally, I'll show you a series of steps that you can take to make it run faster in your scene. So let's get started. So what is global illumination? Well, global illumination is a simulation of light bouncing around in your scene. Without global illumination, areas of your scene that are in shadow or not in direct light become dark because the light doesn't bounce. With global illumination on, light bounces around the scene. So areas that used to be dark are lit up by bounce light. As light bounces, it takes on the diffuse color of objects that it hits. So for example, this red wall, uh, when light hits it and bounces off, you can see that red spills out into uh, some of the rest of the scene. So where direct lighting just lights up the objects that are directly hit by light coming from the light source, global illumination simulates what life, light does after that. So it hits the direct, directly lit objects and then bounces off and hits other objects as well. And this causes the whole scene to be flooded with light, not just the objects that are hit directly with the light sources. Normally, Global illumination is done in Unreal through light baking. So here in Unreal, if you come to build, under the build menu, you can pick to build the lighting. And what that does is it ray traces the global illumination offline using your CPU, using your main processor in your computer. And then it stores that in light maps and applies it to the surfaces of your objects. What we're gonna look at today is real-time ray traced global illumination, which means these things are being done in real time. And that's a really cool thing to be able to do. The fact that computer hardware is strong enough to do this at all just blows my mind and I'm really excited about it. So let's take a look at how you turn it on. So the first thing that we're gonna do is I've I built this a simple test scene here and it just it basically has a few cubes that I've scaled out. So it has a roof and it has a floor. It has some cubes for pillars over here. And then as we can go inside this building, if we come around the corner here, kind of go into the interior of it. And so what I want to do now is show you how to turn it on. I have a couple of lights here. I have a direct light source and I have a skylight. And so to start, I'm going to turn on ray trace shadows for each of these. So here's my direct light source, and I'm going to scroll down here and choose Cast Ray Trace Shadows. Now before I do this, I want, to no I want you to notice that the shadows in my scene here have uh, s some little rendering artifacts. Can you see how there are these like black bumps along the edges of things? And there are these striated lines on my surface. Those are some of the shadow artifacts that are created by using uh, shadow maps. And you'll notice uh, that when I turn on uh, ray traced shadows, those, art those artifacts completely disappear. The ray traced shadows are significantly uh, more accurate and precise uh, than light map shadows. Okay, so we turned on cast ray trace shadows for our light source for our directional light. And I'm gonna do the same thing for the skylight. So I'm gonna scroll down to here where it says cast ray trace shadows. I'm gonna turn those on for the skylight as well. And now you can see with ray trace shadows, my, my unlit areas, the areas that are in shadow are significantly darker. And especially if I come in here to the inside of my structure you can see that the walls are just completely black and that's because there's no bounce light happening so the next thing that i need to do is turn on uh, ray traced global illumination so that i can get some bounce light going on so in order to do that i'm going to pick my post process volume 
and I'm going to come down here to ray tracing global illumination. And right now it's set to disabled. I'm going to drop this down and pick brute force. Now you can see that my shadows are filled in. So my light comes from uh, my light source, which is over here. And it's going to hit this wall here and bounce off the wall and then light up the floor. So you can see that whereas before these shadows cast by the pillars used to be really black, they're now being lit by the bounce light off of this wall. Uh, and I've got global illumination happening and it's happening in real time. Let's come on in here and I'll kind of round the corner here and show you what's going on. So this is another nice little spot where the global illumination is working. You can see that this little uh, ribbon of light here just barely missed this pillar and it's shining in here to the interior of my building and hitting this wall and the lights bouncing around so you get this nice flood of light happening here where before uh, this area was just black and if I continue on into my structure well it's still dark in here because the light can't reach all the way in uh, and I don't have enough bounces but if I were to turn up the bounces I could probably get my lights to come all the way into this portion of the of the building all right let's look at another property of global illumination and that is uh, the fact that light can take on the color of the object that it hits right now if I if I go to uh, unlit in my scene you can see that uh, all of my surfaces are just kind of this creamy white color. Um, but I'm going to pick this wall and I'm going to set the material to uh, a basic wall red material. And this is just a material instance of the basic wall material uh, that I've set to be a red color. So now I've turned my wall red and you can see something really interesting about uh, the surrounding area. The light is coming in and it's hitting these red areas and the red is actually spilling out into the rest of the scene so as the light comes in it takes on the color of this wall and as it bounces off it spills that color out into the rest of the scene so you can see that the back sides of these pillars are lit with red light because the light has been tinted red uh, from this wall and that's a really cool looking effect so you might be saying to yourself, wow, this ray trace global illumination stuff is really amazing. I should just turn it on all the time and, and use it for everything. Uh, well, not so fast. If you take a look over here at the frame rate, you can see that I'm just getting 19 or 20 frames a second. And that is a serious problem. Uh, so this is the most expensive thing that you can do with ray tracing in real time. And you have to be really careful what you choose to use it for because it has the potential to really hurt the performance of your game. So under what conditions or in what circumstances should you use real-time ray traced global illumination? Well, the thing that this is really good at is when you have moving objects and moving light sources. If your light sources are not moving, you should just be baking your uh, lighting into your static objects and uh, using baked light because it can look as good or even better than real-time ray trace global illumination and it has no cost at all. Uh, let's go back here and turn off global illumination again. I'll just set it to disabled. And you can see that instantly my frame rate jumped up to 65 and that's even with ray trace shadows on. So if I were to turn those off, uh, I think my performance before was something like 120 or something. So you can see that the real time ray trace uh, global illumination is really hurting my performance. So when should you use it? When you have moving light sources, when you have moving objects, if you have static objects and static light sources, boy, you should totally keep it off and just bake your lighting. But if your scene has moving light, uh, like the sun traveling across the sky for a day-night system, for example, in that case, you might want to consider uh, using real-time ray traced uh, global illumination. So, if you are can you if you are going to use it, 
how can you make it go faster? Uh, because obviously, let's come in here and, and take a look at, at the scene like this. So here we're getting about 20 frames a second, and that's really not that playable for a game. So we're going to take a couple of steps to make it go faster. Now, obviously, the first step to make it go faster is to just not even use it. If you turn it off completely, boom, your problem is solved. Um, but if you need to, <laughs> we're going we're gonna to turn it on and I'm going to show you a couple of things that you can do to make it go faster. So we're starting out with a frame rate of about 20 frames a second. The first thing that you can do is instead of using this brute force method, there are two different methods available for doing real-time ray trace global illumination. And the second one is called final gather. Brute force is a more accurate, uh, more precise method, but it's also significantly more expensive. So I'm gonna set this to use the final gather method. And you can see right away, my frame rate went from 20 all the way up to 36. So that is a significant win for performance. I don't know if you can see down here, but there's quite a bit more noise introduced into uh, the, the global illumination. And we'll adjust that in just a minute, but I wanna show you some other, other ways of improving performance. And then we'll take a look at, at how we can improve this quality here. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to use a setting in the console commands called r.raytracing.globalillumination.screen percentage. So I'm just going to type that here. r.raytracing. And as soon as I start to type it, all of the ray tracing commands come up. And I'm going to come down here to the global illumination section and pick screen percentage. And basically this determines uh, what percentage of the screen the rays take up. And it defaults to 50. So if I just leave this blank and hit enter, you can see down here that it says the current value is set to 50. Um, but I'm going to set it to 25. So currently our frame rate is 36 frames a second. And if I set this from 50 to 25, you can see we jump from 36 frames a second up to 41 frames a second. So that's a pretty nice improvement. Let's take a look at another improvement we can do. Right now, our skylight is doing four samples per pixel for ray tracing. And so our current frame rate is at 41. And if I reduce our ray tracing samples per pixel on the skylight from four down to one, we've gone from 41 up to about 45 frames a second. So that's another nice improvement. All right, now let's enter another uh, console command. And this one's gonna improve it just a tiny bit. So we're at about 45 frames a second right now. This console command is r.raytracing.globalillumination.nextevent estimation samples. And this defaults to a value of two. If I hit enter here, you can see the value is set to two, um, but I'm gonna set it to a value of one. So we're at 45 FPS right now. And after putting that in, I jumped to about 46. So not a whole huge amount of change there, but it, it did get us just a little bit. All right, so we started out at 24, at 20 frames a second, and now we're at 45, 46 frames a second. So we more than doubled our performance. And that's fantastic, but you can see that our quality is not that great. So we wanna improve our quality a little bit, and we can do that by coming back here to global post-process volume. And I'm gonna scroll down here to samples per pixel. Right now it's set to four. And when we're using final gather, these samples per pixel are significantly cheaper. So instead of four, I'm gonna set this to 16. We're gonna watch our frame rate here. We're at about 46 right now. And when I set samples per pixel to 16, we lost about three frames per second. I dropped down to 43 from 46. But you can see all of that swimming noise that I used to have is almost completely gone by increasing the sample count. Now, if I want to continue to sacrifice a little bit of performance, 
I can increase my sample count again up to 32. And now I'm gonna get much smoother looking lighting, uh, but my frame rate has dropped down to 41. So you'll need to decide what kind of a performance to quality trade-off you wanna use. Personally, I like leaving my sample count at 16, and it does swim a little bit, but keep in mind, again, if we switch back to the unlit mode, uh, you know, our surfaces are solid and white, so it really shows off that global illumination. But if I were to add normal maps and colored surfaces, uh, this kind of noisy modeliness in the lighting would be significantly less obvious. All right, so you can see that the global illumination is kind of noisy as I move around, but this is one of those effects that accumulates over time. So it uses temporal accumulation. And the longer that I stay still, the less noisy it becomes. And so the global illumination just kind of dials itself in over time. So when I move, it's noisy, but then when I come to a stop, it dials in and becomes nice and clean. All right, so that's how global illumination works. Basically, we're using ray tracing to simulate how light bounces around our scene. As the light bounces, it picks up color and bleeds that color into our shadow areas uh, so that our results are really realistic looking. And so the lighting in our scene works just like lighting does in real life. Pretty cool. Uh, we went over how to turn it on, what it is, uh, and how to improve the performance of it, and basically double the performance um, from, the, from the default settings that uh, Unreal has when you first turn it on. So I hope this tutorial was helpful. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Next week, we'll talk about another ray tracing topic, probably some of the ray trace settings that are available uh, when you create your materials. Uh, so that'll be an interesting topic to go over. Uh, come back next week for that one, and I'll see you next week, everybody.